All right, so the, this is the instructions uh, to sew your mask with your machine. Uh, we have our bobbin winded and in the case. We have the thread threaded and uh, through the needle. So now we are ready uh, to choose our stitch length. And the preparation for the mask is exactly the same as it was when we hand sewed it. Uh, we have two pieces right sides together of our lining fabric and two pieces right sides together of our fabric that's going to show. So this is the right side. So I have right sides together and I have, have that front curved seam pinned. All right. So the, um, the stitch we're going to choose, and you can either use your finger or the pen that's in your box, uh, is this straight stitch right here. And, uh, remember, uh, on the other video that we saw that the foot for that stitch is J and the one that I have in here uh, it says J on it so make sure it's the same foot all right so um, this has changed uh, the stitch length has changed so we want to change it back to the default so how you do that so it shouldn't be at 0 to 5 it should be at 0 to 2.5 we click that and we click reset and now it changes it and now I'm going back to my straight stitch. And if I want to um, back stitch automatically at the beginning, I can do that by clicking on this down arrow. And now I can stitch, I'm ready to stitch. So um, remember when the presser foot is up, we have the red uh, lit up and when it's down, it's green. So I am going to line up my cut edge with the edge of my uh, presser foot, and that will be 3 eighths of an inch, which is what our seam allowance is. And I'm gonna start from the beginning. And now it backstitched for us, and we are gonna continue on. And remember um, to stay right here on that first arrow so it's slow and you're just pressing down with your presser foot and each time you come to a pin stop so lift your foot off your presser foot take the pin out put it into your pin cushion and then continue to sew and remember your sewing safety that your hand should be to the left or right of the machine needle and then for right now, you're going slow on the slow speed. Okay, when I come to the pin, I stop, I take out the pin, and I continue to the end of the seam. And then I'm gonna back stitch when I get to the end of the seam. So I'm almost to the end, and then I'm gonna push this down arrow, this button right here, and that back stitches, and then I'm gonna continue. And now that I'm to the end, I'm bringing my needle up with this button, and then I'm cutting the thread with the, the button that looks like the scissors. Okay, now I'm lifting my presser foot, and then I'm finished with that seam. So where I started, I'm just going to clip that off. And then I'm going to continue and do my other seam. Okay, it's back stitching for me. I'm stopping. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. And I'm really controlling um, where that cut edge is on the edge of my foot with my hand. So when I come to my needle or my pin, excuse me, um, I'm going to continue to sew and just make sure everything's flat as you sew. And my pin's coming out, so I'm going to stop my uh, presser or my foot control, 
and I am going to continue stitching. Okay, and when I come to the end, I'm going to back stitch. And then I'm going to lift my needle up and then I'm going to cut. And now I'm going to clip off those ends. And then we have the same step as we had before where we're just clipping that curved seam. So that it lays flatter. So I'm going to do that to the lining too. And then I'm going to come over to the iron and I'm going to iron or press each seam to one side. And always remember, remember your iron safety. When it's not in use, we put it on our, its base. Uh, my iron is a automatic shutoff. All our irons in our classroom are automatic shutoff. So, some extra thread. So now I'm just gonna press my seam on this one. I'm just gonna press it to the right. And I'm just going to press it flat. So now it's going to lay really flat. So I press that one to the right. And I'm, this one I'm going to press to the left. And you might not be able to get uh, all the way into the seam because it's really curved and it's really a tight, high tight curve. Okay, I'm just going to press it flat again so everything's nice and flat. And then I'm going to take my pins. And this time I'm just going to pin the top part of my seam. So what that the top part is, it's more pointed than the than the bottom part is. Okay, so I'm going to show you a new trick to make it even uh more professional looking okay so we're pinning the top seam first we'll pin the bottom seam later make sure you're matching your raw edges on all sides Okay, then we're going to take it back over to the sewing machine and we're going to uh, stitch this 3 eighths of an inch also. So our presser foot goes down, that first pin comes out and we are making sure that our raw edges or our cut edge is along the, um, the presser foot and it will automatically stitch it for you. Okay, each time I come to the the needle I or the pin I am stopping. So as I'm I'm making sure everything's nice and flat under there and it is. Okay, remember when we pin this together, just like we did before, we matched our seam lines.
<clears throat> when I come to the end, I'm back stitching. And I'm bringing my needle up and clipping it. Okay. So again, like we did with uh, the mask, the um, hand stitch mask, we still want to clip uh, the seam because it's curved. Remember, clip to the stitching line, not through it. So the next step is a little bit different than what we did um, for our uh, hand-stitched <clears throat> mask. So what we're going to do is called under-stitching. Uh, we do this with garments, uh, anything that you want to make flat. And like I had said before, uh, that is our goal in sewing is to make everything flat and straight and square. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I am going to start stitching... I'm going to pull this apart and I'm going to be stitching on my lining piece, not on my the fabric that's going to be on the outside. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stitch right close to this stitching line, but not on it. So this is called under stitching. Okay, just put it, position your needle. And a good rule of thumb on this foot is if you put this edge right here, along your stitching line, you should have a really straight under stitch. Okay, so again, I'm pulling it apart because I want it to be as flat as possible. Okay, it's gonna back stitch for me. And take your time with this step. And as you go, keep pulling it apart and then readjusting it and pulling it so that seam is really flat. And because you clip that seam, that curved seam, it's going to, um, you'll be able to stitch over it a lot easier than if you hadn't, okay? So you keep stitching your understitch and you see how I'm stopping? And then when I come to the end, I'm going to back stitch again. I'm going to lift my needle up and clip it and I'm going to go back over to the ironing board and I'm going to press that down and I'll show you how great it uh, folds over it nice and flat. Okay, if you don't have an iron it will still it will still work pretty well. Remember just to keep uh, kind of rolling it. Right. So even though I have red as my lining, um, by doing the under stitch, you can't see the lining at all. So that is what your edge will look like. It's really, really flat now, and you can't even see the red. Okay. So now we're gonna go back over to our machine. We're gonna turn it back around, right sides together. Remember, right sides are always together. And we are gonna pin our seam line. We're matching our seam lines and making sure that they're to opposite sides, just like we did at the top. So remember on the, um, the bottom seam, we have this corner to go around. 
angle, excuse me, an angle. So it's not a right angle, it's just an angle. Okay, so now we take it back to the machine, pull our thread out just a little bit. We're marking up our, uh, our raw edge with the side of the right side of our presser foot. I'm gonna take that first pin out and it will back stitch for us again. Okay, I'm coming to that corner and I'm just going to um, take hold of my hand wheel and move it forward, maybe one stitch. And then this is where I pivot. So I bring up my presser foot, leave my needle down. I don't have it quite right. Just, there we go. So you'll know it's in the right place if once you turn it, then your raw edge is on the edge of your uh your presser foot. So always just keep checking to make sure everything's flat. Okay, so I'm gonna slow it down. When we come to this, this seam, just make sure everything's nice and flat. Almost pull it a little bit, not tight, but taut. It's called taut. You're not really stretching it. You're just making sure that everything is really flat. again and I, my needle is down my presser foot's up I'm pivoting my fabric so I went I'm pivoting it towards the back and now I can finish my seam so again I'm doing the back stitch by pressing the button and now I'm finished and I bring up my needle and cut and bring up my presser foot okay so now I'm gonna go back in there I'm just gonna do a few clips because it's not uh, it's not really really curved here but I'm just gonna give it a few clips on the curve and then I have to give it a clip right where that angle is at okay make sure you're not going through that all right, so we're almost finished. Now we are going to turn it just like we did before. Remember, don't force it. It's going through a very small space. Right, then I'm going to go back over to the iron. Now on this this edge we weren't able to understitch it just because it's so small, but we should be able to press it pretty well. So remember we're just pulling, um, kind of rolling it so that we don't see. Well, on mine we don't see the red. Okay. Some of you will have different colors for your lining and some will have the same fabric. Okay, so then I'm gonna take my ruler again, just like I did before, and I am marking three quarters of an inch. So this is, you don't have a marker like this, but this is a disappearing ink pen. It's wonderful. Uh, I think we'll get some of those in our classroom next year. Okay, so I've marked it three quarters of an inch. And then I'm gonna just press that down. Same on the other side. 
And then we're gonna do the same thing we did in our hand-stitched mask. We are just gonna fold it over maybe a quarter of an inch so we have a nice clean edge. So it looks like that, okay? Those are a nice clean edge, so we're gonna do that on the other side. And then we're gonna take it back over to our machine. And we'll put a few pins in it. Okay, when you're pinning, always make sure you know where your finger is underneath, okay? So that you don't poke yourself. If you have any loose threads, just go, clip, go ahead and clip those off. Okay, so again, we're only going to be stitching on the edge. So a good rule of thumb is just to put the edge of this inside edge of your presser foot along your folded edge. And start to stitch and it will back stitch for you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, because this is really thick, I'm gonna change my um, my stitch width. So I'm gonna go here, and I'm just gonna bring it up to about four. We'll see how that does, okay? Okay, so I've gotta start it over because it's not stitching right. So give me a second here. So if that happens, it gets all mucked up like that. Just take it out and start over again. There will be lots of times where you have to start over. Just not. Okay, so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to change my stitch width again. I'm going to bring it up to five. We'll see how that does. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start it in a little bit because it's having a hard time because of its. Um, come to the end I'm gonna back stitch there we go so whenever the machine struggles a little bit uh, I can't get through the thickness just change that stitch width just like I just did okay let's see if this side goes a little bit better there we go Back stitching. Okay, lifting my needle up and clipping it. 
and then clipping any loose threads I might have. And we have one more step and we're finished. Okay, so now we are gonna go to our last step and I have pre-cut these to 10 inches. And I'm threading it again through my yellow needle and bringing it through our casing. Remember the casing is just that channel that we've created. And then I'm tying it in a double knot. And again, try it on to make sure that it fits you correctly before you get it really tight. And I'm gonna tie it again. And then I'm pulling it through and pushing that knot in the casing with my needle. So I want it to be nice and neat. Okay. And then I'm doing the other side. Okay, and then I'm gonna try it on. And there you have your mask sewn with your machine.